Hi, this is Ed in Edmonds, Washington. I want to give you a quick tour of my studio, and uh, if you're interested in taking lessons, please let me know. Um, I do offer a free info session that gets pretty involved in understanding what it, learn, uh, what it takes to learn how to play drums and percussion. Uh, what I can tell you real quickly here, you don't need a drum set of this size, but I use this for recording, for film and TV music, things like that in my own groups. Um, but, uh, you know, basic five-piece set, one, two, three, four, five, drums, crash cymbal, a ride cymbal, crash cymbal, hi-hat, pair of sticks, you know, so it's all uh, doable for not too much money new or used out there. I did run the drum exchange for 25 years. We closed uh, in 2017. I'm focusing on teaching and writing at this point. Anyway, I learned a lot about selling drums and understanding how they're made. And I can tell you that you don't have to spend that much to get pretty good stuff. But you should shop local if you ever can because it's important uh, to support stores that are out there. They're the ones that are going to give you information. Um, anyway, what I'd like to do really quickly is just give you a very quick preview of what I do teaching drums and percussion these days. Um, I have a universal technique that uh, it's basically about this idea. I can use my arms, my wrist, or my fingers, right? Uh, when I hold sticks, I, I choose to use mostly my wrist. That's where the power is. That's just my opinion about that. But fingers might come in handy for very fast stuff, a um, little more control. Uh, the, the grip I teach, what we call match grip, also works on marimba vibes and timpani. Timbales, any stick instrument that I also teach as well. Uh, so generally speaking, I teach people how to hold the sticks and how to move them efficiently. Uh, do we start from here? Do we start from down here? Or do we do something else? So these are all kind of the, the technique of percussion. If we could understand this in almost a robotic fashion of switch strokes, lift down strokes, down up strokes, we could kind of not have to think about rights and lefts that much. So I might teach you a pattern. Instead of right, left, right, right, it might be switch, 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 lift down. Sounds complex, but it's really pretty easy. And I get students within about two to three months to understand pretty complex sticking patterns. And I preview all sorts of styles of music, jazz, rock, funk, uh, world music, Latin, uh, polka, just about anything we go through and, and you get a taste of it. After that we get into books and reading and it's a little more specific. But in general, uh, learning how to hold the sticks is not that bad and it does universal the, the technique I use. Now there's other techniques what we call traditional grip. Those have to do with angle snare drums. Um, I can teach those, but this takes about seven years longer, so I generally prefer to start people on match grip, and then if, later if they want to learn how to play traditional grip, they, they'll come to me and we'll, we'll get into that as well. But generally, we can learn single strokes. Those create things like rolls on cymbals. Double strokes, which also create rolls. We call double stroke rolls. And then what we call buzz rolls. And those take a long time to learn. Uh, the closed roll. Music can be used for classical, for popular music. The same technique of learning how to hold sticks and play, say, a snare drum is going to work both for jazz and, and rock music and pop music as well as for orchestral music and marching music. Uh, so really you don't have to learn a whole lot of variety of things initially. What you really want to understand are fundamentals. We also want to learn how to count things like 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. You've probably heard things like that before. That's what we call subdivision. If my music's in 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I want to subdivide 2 notes per number, I might go 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and like that. And I might play it, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. And. Well, if we're going to learn counting systems, let's learn them all. Not just 1 and 2 and or 1 and. I have counting systems for five notes per pulse, like one tiki tika two tiki tika or seven, one tiki tika tika two tiki tika tika. So a really pretty involved systems, and those allow us to learn everything pretty comprehensively as well. Uh, we want to learn how to take these things and apply them on the instruments, of course. And uh, when we're playing the drum set, we have our feet available as well. In fact, those can keep track of pulses to begin with. One, two, three, four. We might then play one and two and three and four and. One a lit, two a lit, three a lit, four a lit. One and a two and a three and a four and a. One to get two to get three to get four to get Those odd numbers like fives are really great for rolls 
because if I base these close rolls on those, they don't sound like any kind of rhythm before or after. Anyway, we get deeper into those things. But these things, even these single strokes, generate fills around the drums. That's one of the elements of drumming. So we really have kind of three things we do playing drums. There's what we call playing time. In the rock styles or jazz. I can play over here as well. And uh, at that point, I'm playing a lot of stuff at the same time. That uh, something like a disco beat from the 70s is all we call pulse, same distance apart, but is uh, rhythms that are more uh, complex that are long and short notes mixed up. Short, long, short, long, long. Those are syncopations. So generally, it's easier to start with pulses and build up to slight syncopations to full syncopations. Again, I can get into this in the info session if you're interested. But basically, we have three things we do playing drums. There's time, fill, and punch. I can play my time again over here. Time. Some are quite complex to play as well. One thing I do advocate is that students start not just with the snare drum, but they also start with uh, a drum set because then one day if they're in band in school and the bass drum player and the crash drum player don't show up, they can sound like everybody. This is also the kind of thing you might do in a Broadway show when the drum set player is down in the pit and they have to sound like a marching band as well. So my, my idea is to teach people uh, really, again, universal ideas that they can use on any instrument, any surface. I can take students from drum set and move them over to melody instruments very quickly because the technique is the same, the sticking patterns are the same. We just have to learn melody and harmony. So there's some, there's some really nice transitional stuff that you can do to make that quick. Uh, and, and just get out there and play as much as you can, of course, in a, in a garage band, your friends, with the radio, with, t uh, with, the, with videos nowadays, with, with YouTube, everything you got out there. There's programs that slow the music down that make it really easy to play along with now, too. So anyway, if you're interested in drum lessons, this is just kind of a sneak peek about it. Uh, find me on the web, at harpinmusic.com. I also have a second website, at harpinlessons.com. And uh, you can contact me from there and uh, let me know if you're interested. I might do some instruments via Skype. Uh, I do have it set up. I, I haven't done a lot with it, but I'm open to the, trying it out. Um, also, uh, if you have questions, you want to email me, I'm always happy to answer those things too. But in general, a one-on-one -on -one does make the most sense. I do teach in Seattle, in Wallingford currently. At Creative Music Adventures, I have a second studio there as well. So uh, if you're interested in lessons in either location, let me know, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see you soon. Thanks.